Hello everyone, what's happening? This is Forgo, and today we have the update details. So we have six new heroes, Sentry, Moonstone, Scorpion, Ares, Dokken, and Molecule Man have been added, and two new uniforms for Green Goblin and Bullseye. Potential realization for the new heroes, along with the potential awakening of Ares and Bullseye, check out the abilities of the new Avengers. Please keep an eye out for one of the most powerful members of Dark Avengers as a native tier 3 Sentry has joined the journey. Okay, cool. There are various other changes made in the contest, such as the deletion of character requirements for awakening potential. Now that sounds quality, my friends. That sounds quality for the improvement of convenience and simplification and improvements in skill descriptions of CTP. So please check out the details. So I never had the APK, so I really didn't know what these guys' effects were. Just a little bit, so I'll just kind of briefly go over them. So Sentry's a universal character. He's the tier 3 epic quest character. And he's got a crazy leadership. 30% increase of all attack with, with remove all debuff for 12 seconds on a 20 second cooldown. So every 8 seconds that debuff's going to be up along with the all attack buff. Wow, that's pretty insane. And he's got a revive. He has super armor, decrease all damage received by 30%, increase chain damage by 25%. Whoa. Then his active skill. Burn damage, stun, skill 2, he has immunity, accumulation based on his damage he deals, pretty crazy, very, very nice, okay. Then he has bleed, he has incapacitation, which is really awesome for PvP, removing all active buffs, 10% uh, increase of all defense, step, all defense down stacks up to 50%, lasts for 5 seconds. Then he has another all defense down that stacks up to 50%. This is great because they won't intervene with each other. Doesn't matter which skill you use first. One won't override the other because they both cap out at 50%. That's actually nice. And then he has an all attack buff by 50%. Crit rate buff by 50%. Whoa. That is crazy crit rate buff. So that's really going to help make it easier to level him up. And this is on a 14 second cooldown. And it lasts for 6 seconds. So you can damn near keep this up the whole time. And then his fist skill gives him penetration, Ooh. and then heal, then paralysis. So if they don't have a debuff and PvP, you're, they're freaking dead pretty much. He's got 4 seconds invincibility, so he's got immunity, invincibility, accumulation, revive. Yeah, Sentry looks pretty damn insane. And then we have Molecule Man, who has an also insane leadership. You know, decreased chain hit damage by 15% when attacked. And when debuffed, applies all allies, removes all debuffs for 6 seconds on a 10 second cooldown. That means every 4 seconds, this is going to be up. And the crazy thing is, it ignores damage increase, decrease effect between self and opposing faction. Which means all those like increased damage dealt to supervillain buffs or decreased damage received from supervillains or superhero buffs. He ignores that and that applies to all allies. So putting Mystique or Colossus in there isn't going to help you as long as this guy's in the leadership. That could be a massive, in fact, I'm pretty pretty well betting it's going to be a massive game changer for PvP. And probably the biggest incentive to have the character, other than just maybe loving him. Then he's got Reflect, Physical Reflect, Decrease the Effect of Reflect by 50%, Revive, uh, just some text here, Stuns, Incapacitation, 30% Decrease of All Attack, in turn weakening the characters, Immunity, uh, All Defense Sound Sex up to 60%, that's actually pretty good. For 7 seconds, has a heal, has penetrate everything up to 10 seconds. Yeah, I mean, he looks definitely PvP. Decrease all damage received by 50%. Holy mother of God, whoa. But he's a tier 2, so he's not going to have the highest stats to begin with. And from what I've seen, he looks like he's going to be good, but I think he's going to be kind of like a like what Silver Surfer was when he first showed up. Really good in PvP, especially if you manually play him. But I think mainly just a leadership, but we'll see, we'll see. I have no idea. And then time freeze, pretty cool. And then we have Moonstone, who's a female blast super villain. And being a blast type really actually hurts her because there's no blast female days in ABX, at least as far as ABX is concerned. It's really not going to be good for squad battle because there's already plenty of other characters that can destroy it. Uh, but uh, maybe for world boss, she'll be really good. I mean, she is the deluxe pack character. She had dodge rate increase. Okay, crappy leadership. Uh, she has guaranteed critical rate. Okay, she has silence. Uh, let's see here. Increase, yeah, nothing major there. Nothing major there. Stun, bleed. She does have a heal. That's nice. 30% increase of all attack. That's nice. 
She has damage accumulation based on how much damage she deals. She has six, six seconds of immunity. And then she has a damage proc on this fourth skill also. That's pretty cool. She has mind control. Very nice. This lasts for four seconds. This is... A, holy mother of God. What? 28 second cooldown. That means this is going to only be up for every 14 seconds? Oh my God. God, that is an insanely long cooldown. Oh my lord. The damage accumulation does last for 13 seconds, which is good. Especially since she's got a 14 second cooldown, but wow. I have to see how she plays. I don't really know. I haven't seen any gameplay from her, so I have no idea how strong she is. Then she's got some all defense down that applies world boss. She does have a little penetrate, everything except for invincibility. She does have increased all attack by 40%. That's nice. Crit rate buff by 40%. Going to be fairly easy to max out her stats because of that, even though she doesn't have a uniform. Ares, who's a combat superhero, which is very interesting to me. You can get him from uh, being an ally shifter in the game, so you can get him for free. All the characters you can in the game, uh, in the epic quest, you can get for free, That which is great for a lot of us because we are free to play these days. <laughs> and for all the free to plays, it's always been free to play. And then uh, he has 30% increase in physical attack leadership. It's okay. Uh, there's plenty of leaderships that are better than that, but it's okay to self buffing leadership. Especially for Shadowland, maybe even World Boss. He is an awakened character. He has a heal, which is nice. Super armor. Okay, he has... Oh, this is not. 100% chance to increase critical damage by 100% on critical attacks. Whoa. That's actually really damn good. That means he's going to have 300% critical damage if you have max critical damage of 200%. 100% chance. Every time you do a crit hit, your critical damage is going to be 300%. Whoa. That's a lot of extra power. Some text, some text, nothing major there. Increased guaranteed critical rate. Immunity, which is nice. Okay, all defense down. Okay, invincibility. That's really nice. So he's got immunity, invincibility. Should have a lot of survivability. He's got a heal. Increased all attack by 40%. Crit rate buff by 40%. Okay, Ares looks pretty good. We'll see. Scorpion is a free-to-play character, which is great. He's also in the future past. He's got a crappy leadership. Terrible. Who cares? Increase all attack and defense by 30%. Crit rate by 20%. Uh, heal. Oh, he's got a heal. That's nice. That's actually good. Uh, he deals poison damage. Uh, let's see here. Nothing really major there. Increase poison damage. Okay. Paralysis. Okay, it works for more boss. That's nice. A little form of foul. Crowd control. Tapping and holding a skill icon will charge the skill and release. Okay, so he's got a charging skill. All defense sound goes up to 55%. Okay, super armor, invincibility. Really wacky that they put super armor there because invincibility gives you native super armor. That's kind of wacky. Uh, for eight seconds, last for eight seconds. And uh, why does it say invincibility and 100% chance for immunity to all damage? That's uh, that's kind of weird. So that means he won't be debuffed. This might be a typo. I'm not really sure, but it won't be debuffed or it won't be guard broken. Okay, that is strange. Seeing immunity and invincibility on the same skill uh i don't know if that's a typo but if it isn't that just means he's not going to get guard broken and he's not going to get debuffed when he's doing his skill that's good uh then he has 45 percent increase of all attack on his fifth skill wow then dakin who i hear is the worst of all of them which is really sad to say that wolverine's son is following that trend of not so good character which is a real bummer so they're probably just saving him for a damn uniform you know like they do with a lot of characters uh, he's a combat super villain. Okay, you're going to get him from the epic quest. Uh, decreased debuff duration. He has a heal. Okay, tier 2. His heal's much better. Uh, super armor. Ignore target dodge rate by 50%. That's really good. Uh, he's got bleed, 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 heal. Oh, nice. Another heal. That's really good. Uh, he has penetrate everything for 2 seconds. Then he has uh, increased all attack. And he has immunity. So he's got a nice heal. He's got a nice long immunity. This is on an eight second cooldown. Okay, so for three seconds at a time, he won't have any immunity, but he does have peril paralysis. Okay. And then we have the uniform. So Iron Patriot, uh, who is Green Goblin's uh, uniform. Okay, so let's see what we got here. Uh, Dark Avenger Ally, 60% increase of all attack leadership. And keep in mind, guys, I haven't seen really any of the gameplay from any of these this is this is all the first time i've really seen this stuff and then the passive is applies itself oh, okay 30 percent increase of energy attack okay tier two whoa applies to dark avengers wow so he's given extra damage dealt to super villains and super by 40 percent 
on top of the 60% leadership. So that's insane for Dark Avenger allies. A uh, little burn, uh, shield, uh, increased damage by 40% for two attacks, which is great. That means you can do the skill, cancel another skill, and you'll still get that proc for 40%. Uh, you got the four skill with all defense now, it goes up to 40%, burn damage, and then increase all attack by 25%, crit rate by 25%. Okay. Paralysis, okay. And then Bullseye, who also has an awakened skill. So let's take a look at this guy. He's got 70% chance to penetrate super armor, barrier shield, all damage, immune, invincibility effect. Okay, so he penetrates everything. Okay, and then 100% chance of immunity, all damage, paralysis, freeze, all attack by 35%, crit rate by 35%. Nice. And burn. Okay. Okay, and then all defense sound. You know, from what I've seen so far, it looks like uh, Ares is really good. Moonstone's pretty decent. Scorpion's pretty decent. Dokken's the worst, uh, from what I'm hearing anyways. I don't really know for sure. Uh, and then we have the Tier 3 effects. Uh, silence, all defense down goes up 70%. That's freaking nuts. And then he has the... And keep in mind, Sentry also has all defense down on his skill. So if you do those skills first, you won't get this stack up to 70% on your Tier 3. So it's going to be important to do your Tier 3, get the 70% to apply first, before you run into your skills afterwards. And then he has invincibility. Invincible 10 seconds, okay. Increased damage by 80% for one attack. Not a lot on his tier 3, but okay. But he's got a lot in his kit. And then we have Ares and Bullseyes. Awakened uh, stats. Uh, burn, chill, chill. That's interesting for Ares. Crit rate by 40% crit damage. I mean, pretty much the same old, same old that we always come accustomed to with these Awakened characters. Remove all debuff, blah, blah, blah. Increase all attack by 25%. Okay, okay. And it looks like Bullseye's same one. He's got massive damage accumulation, whereas Ares doesn't, okay, on his Awakened skill. Both of them stack up to 65% all defense down. That's a hell of a lot. Uh, with a debuff leadership, that's going to be nutso. And you can see the skills here. In response to our agent's feedback that our upgrade requirements for other heroes make it too difficult to proceed in potential Awakening, we have deleted the potential awakening character requirement for the December update. And that's the key words for the December update. But that means that all these awakening characters that we have in this update, we don't need any requirements. We don't need characters to level them up. This is amazing. Ned Marble, shout out to you. Thank you. This is freaking amazing. Thank you. This is wonderful. And I got to give him a big props for this. But although we will be going into some negativity, unfortunately, but this is freaking awesome. Thank you so much for this one. All right. Only the target hero has to reach tier two and level 70 in order to awaken potential, which is freaking awesome. Let me see the new epic quest, Dark Rain. You're going to be playing with Sentry. We all know this. You have to unlock all these characters to tier two, Sentry to tier three to get Molecule Man. We know all this. Then we have the deluxe pack where you can buy for 60 grand crystals or you can buy with real money, which is actually a better deal. You get crystals to return, although most of us are going to be free to play. Now, if I wasn't free to play, I would buy this deal. I would buy it. And I'm sure a lot of you would buy it too. But guess what? We're probably not going to. We're probably just going to grind out crystals and just buy the pack this way and get Moonstone this way. That yep, it is what it is. You know, it is what it is. Then we have some other goodies. I'm not really going to go into all this stuff. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Then we have the future patch. You can see Scorpions in here. Yep, this is something else I probably would have bought. I probably would have bought it. You know, we could get these cool looking icons. I mean, you got Sentry, Wolby, and Groot, who actually had was data mine. So that's going to be interesting to see about Groot and White Fox. But that's a whole other subject. Uh, yeah, real bum deal, man. I would have loved to have bought this. I sure wouldn't have, Marvel. I would have been so happy to buy this. But... It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen because as I read further in this thing, I see more things about the uniforms. They took the crystals away. They got us gold. I mean, now we got two characters in here that we have to max the uniforms. I mean, that's good. But no crystals, so good job. Always willing to take away, but not willing to give, Netmarble. Always willing, huh? And then the descriptions, I don't care. I'm not even going to read this because I don't give a crap. I don't care. And I'm not going to get into all this either. So the thing that I noticed the most about this is where in the hell are our changes? Oh, and look at this. 326 dislikes. Is this a surprise to anyone? Oh, Jesus. 
so we everybody's been posting all this stuff in the forums you know with the dislikes on the videos and so on and so on and so on and yet netmarble still chooses to ignore us now shout out to them for getting rid of the potential awakening requirements thank you but where the hell are our changes where are our changes you know give us more resources or take the damn ctp and card system out but okay whatever it is what it is you know what guys i'm honestly tired of talking about this i'm really tired of harping on it i guess this is just going to be the norm this is going to be the norm we're just going to see dislike after dislike after dislike on everything that netmarble does because they're not willing to acknowledge its players they're not willing to acknowledge us and they're just willing to keep ignoring us so you know what that's fine whatever I'm just going to play the game for now on. I'm just going to be free to play. I'm honestly tired of harping on this and talking about it. Uh, but the boycott will remain strong until something is done. Uh, you know, I can't speak for everybody out there, but I know I can speak for myself. The update, actually, there's some good things in here, especially with the a potential awakening requirement gone, at least for this update. That's amazing. And it's nice that we can get all of these characters with the grind. And that's amazing, too. But the fact that they're not listening to us just shows their, well, it just shows their colors once again. So, you know, as far as the update, I mean, I'm excited that the Epic Quest is coming. I'm excited for uh, Sentry. He looks amazing. And, and even though I probably won't need any of these characters, personally, I probably won't need them at all. So I'm just going to slowly grind it, do what I can, play the game day by day and try to enjoy it for what it is. Because I still do love the game. It's just... The dev team just puts a major negative connotation with the game, unfortunately. So let me know how you're all feeling about the patch notes. Let me know if you're excited for the update and how you're feeling about the fact that they still continue to ignore our request. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Y'all take care and have a good one.